Alright, I've, I've traveled three hours to be here, so I'm going to need you guys to be a little bit more excited. Uh, it works for me. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be very forthright to start off with. I, I'm very encouraged uh, being here in Lowndes County. I'm, I'm encouraged uh, by what went on in Quitman in, in Brooks County. I'm, I'm encouraged. I am. We, we can clap for you. I, I know it's, I know it's, uh, it's very easy to forget accomplishments when there's so much negative that's going around. But I'm, I'm here to tell you honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, not just about 2016, but I'm optimistic about 2014, okay? So I think if we can take this room, because earlier Gretchen made a statement about, you know, we should have a little more people here, but I've always been more interested in the quality of people than the quantity. So I think we have a strong group here, and uh, I hope I have what, what I have to share with you today is gonna motivate you and know that they're, they're a group of young people that are doing the right things and making sure that we make a stride in the impact on our community and on this party. So I want to start off first and foremost by answering a question. Uh, my son on the way here, uh, if any of you all have children or grandchildren, like this table here in the center, uh, my son asked me, uh, are we there yet? You know what I mean? That's the, that's the question that 99.9 .9 borrow with the 9% of, of young children ask whenever you go on a road trip. And it made me think about the state of the party. It made me think about asking myself that question, are we there yet? Are we in a position where we can be competitive at 14? Are we in a position where, as the representative stated earlier, that Georgia can become a, a swing state? And, I, and I, will, I will optimistically, not because I'm in front of this group, say that we're very, very close to being there. I'm, I'm not ready to say yes in the sense of, uh, knowing that the party's in the right position because like Wendy stated earlier, we've got some work to do. But when there are people like us that are here that's willing to roll up our sleeves, uh, we had several chances to turn around. The weather got worse and worse and worse. As close as we got to Valdosta here in Lowndes County, and I pressed on because my wife and I, this is my beautiful wife and the wife, and those are our boys, uh, we're, we're in for the long run. And even though I don't live here in Lowndes County, I'm in Atlanta, we want you to know that we recognize how powerful the 159 counties are in Georgia and not just the metropolitan Atlanta region. So I want you to give yourselves a hand and thank you for being here. So I don't want to take up too much time, but I, I want to cover two specific areas, leadership and the environment. Uh, they're very near and dear to me. Uh, my name is Daniel Blackman, uh, as Gretchen stated earlier, and I want to thank Gretchen and John for all that they do and all of you all that are in leadership positions. Uh, I'm, I'm from Columbus, Georgia. My, my wife and I are military brats. Her father retired from the Pentagon. Uh, my father retired as a United States Army Ranger. I uh, grew up in Fort Benning. Any, any retired military people here? No? Well, we appreciate you, sir. And in the beginning when Gretchen opened up, it touched my heart because my father is buried uh, in Georgia National Cemetery, uh, National Military Cemetery in Canton. And it touched me because of the sacrifice that was made for people like me to be on this stage today, to be able to seriously take a look at where we are and to give you all hope and optimism that there's a group of young and emerging leaders that are willing to, to, to stand up where they need to stand and to be able to go and take this, this state, this nation, and this party in the right direction. And what motivated me more than anything about it was I was reading this, this quote as I began to put my speech together to present to you all today. And it's a quote that Helen Keller gave uh, way back when. But the quote, it resonates today. And she said that the worst thing um, than not having sight is to have sight without vision. And, and that's, that's, really, that's really where we are today. It's not that we don't have a vision as a party. It's more so how clear and concise and effective have we articulated that vision. And as leaders, one of the greatest attributes any of us can have as leaders is to be greater listeners than we are speakers. And one way that I know, because I speak at about 30 college campuses a year, and one of the biggest things that I've learned is to keep my mouth shut. Because I had to come to a realization, I'll be uh, 34 in a couple of days, and uh, you know, so I'm not that far removed from college, but I'm not quote unquote the youth anymore. So I had to realize my wife's birthday is on the 4th of July, so she's a star spangled baby. But uh, <laughs> the reason why it touched me was because what I realized was that I don't have all the answers. 
Do I have some of the answers? Yes. But what I had to learn was that if we master the art of listening to understand and not listening to respond, I think what we'll do is we'll begin to hear what people in this state and what people around this nation, particularly young people, are saying, and that's that they want to get involved. We've got to give the 18 to 25 year olds and the 25 to 40 year olds something to do. And when I, when I say that, I admire the work that they did in Clinton. And I'm not saying that because they're here, but what we have to do in this state and around this nation is we have to begin to mobilize and get back to grassroots organizing. We've got to get back to getting to the point where if we see what's going on in Lowndes County. I mean, I, I got an email before I came here with a friend of mine in D.C., Brian Zoko actually emailed me, who was a mutual friend between Gretchen and I, and, and, and Brian had nothing but high accolades about Lowndes County and about how active and about how organized this group is, and I admire that. And I appreciate that because as far as we're, we're going to only go as far as the strength of this party. And, in, and, and if, what, if what we do today is not inspiring the next generation of leaders, I brought my children here today because I want them to see this early. We got to get back to pulling out our grandchildren and our children. We got to get back to going on college campuses. And we, we, we have to just take away all the excuses that the other party has been trying to allow us to make. Wendy just made the point of making sure we give to the party. There's nothing worse than going out there on faith or going out there because people think you're a good person and the same people that push you don't support you. And I want to talk to you today. I don't want to, I don't want to point fingers. I don't want to point blame. I believe the people in this room are here today for a solution. I want to give you a solution. We've got to get back to going out to where people need us most. Gretchen talked a little bit about my interest in energy and the environment. The number one place in this state that I've seen young people in droves is around energy and the environment, around plant vogel and around, and, and around agriculture in this state, and talking to so many young people that just want to have, to, to be inspired again, and not just feel like they're voting, but they're only being talked to when it's time for an election. There are 159 counties in Georgia, 159 counties. And what that means is we can't get comfortable just in Lowndes. We can't get comfortable in Fulton or in Forsyth or in Newton County or Brooks County or wherever we are. We've got to start going to our neighbors and knocking on doors. The first time I ever ran for office, it was a learning experience, and I missed it by about 300 votes. But, you know, things happen for a reason. I, I had a phenomenal experience. But I knocked on 1,700 doors, and I spoke to about maybe 1,500 people. And even though I was 300 votes short, the amount of people that came and said, I appreciate you just asking me what I think. When I think of Vogel, and I, I don't want to get too far off track, but there's a tremendous opportunity we have as Democrats in this state. And, and I, I have to tell you right now, whether you have an interest in energy and the environment, I'm a little biased because that's just my interest. But let me tell you all, there's an article that came out in the New York Times, uh, U.S. World Report has ran it. USA Today has ran it. The eyes of the nation, of the United States of America, is on Georgia right now because the, the United States' nuclear future is contingent on what happens in Waynesboro, Georgia, Burke County. And the reason why it's important for us to understand is because Democrats in this state have to get back to standing out front and being in a position of leadership. It doesn't matter that we don't have a statewide elected official in this state. We have some of the best leaders in this state that I've seen all over this country. And in order for us to be able to make our presence known, in order for more people to be able to want to support the Yellow Dogs and support Lowndes County, we've got to go out there and tell people about the things that are going on and what our plan is to do it. Because quiet is kept. People are looking for leadership. People, for the most part, want you to tell them where they need to go and what they need to do. But more than that, they need to know what's the plan on us getting there. And in, in regards to the conversation about, about energy, what I wanted to say to you all today is because this whole, and how many of you are familiar with, with, with Plant Bowl before I get into myself? Great, I'm speaking to the right crowd. Well, for those of you that don't know, over the past 30 years, uh, a proposal has not been accepted to put a new nuclear reactor online until now, which is Volvo 3 and 4, and South Carolina also shares and, uh, and a portion of being able to put two nuclear reactions online, uh, reactors online. But the issue is more so, when I think of areas like Lowndes County, by, by the way, the last time I was in Lowndes County, I think I told some of you earlier, 
Uh, we got kicked out of the playoffs when I was in high school, so this is kind of bittersweet for me to be able to be here and enjoy a barbecue with you, but to know that the last time I was here was my last time ever playing uh, sports. So, I mean, I appreciate you all's hospitality. I'll leave it at that. But uh, back to my point, when I think of agriculture in the state of Georgia, we are one of the most economically viable states where agriculture is concerned. Uh, I, I was a part of a program called the Institute of Georgia Environmental Leadership, IGEL, and a part of this program was to go around the state and to see the global impact that we have here, not just with peanuts in Georgia, not just with pecans, but with chickens and with, you know, the, the, there's a gentleman here in Georgia that, make, that uses alligator skins to make all the belts and accessories for Gucci. I didn't even know that. Georgia is an economically viable place when it comes to agriculture. And when, they, when we think about Bowl to put everything in perspective, over the past decade, we've experienced some of the most severe droughts in the history of this country. How many of you all can attest to that? Now, with us experiencing these droughts in this state, Vogel 1 and 2 right now uh, um, pretty much acquires 42 million gallons of water a day. We're talking about just to operate these two nuclear facilities, it takes 42 million gallons of water a day. When 3 and 4, if 3 and 4 go online or when, uh, we're going to be talking about 84 million gallons of water, water uh, in some of the most economically hard times where the environment is concerned and water scarcity all over this country has become a great concern and actually it's at the top of the president's list up there with climate change. It's very important for us to pay attention because we have an opportunity in Georgia not just to become a swing state but to take the leadership on a national issue and I think if we miss this because if, don't be mistaken, in Florida and Alabama and California, all over the country, they're watching to see if Vogel is going to be on budget. This is going to determine if we go into a renewable direction or if we go backwards and just focus on nuclear. And I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, I'm not anti-Georgia Power. What I'm anti is consumers taking and ratepayers taking the risk and bearing the burden of cost overruns, bearing the burden. I, I spoke to a group of seniors a couple of months ago and it broke my heart to see seniors that have to choose between being on a fixed income and paying for their medication or paying their light bill. Amen. That's a mm -hmm. tough place to be. Yeah. We have to prove to this state and to this nation that we're the party of compassion, that we're the party that's concerned about work in America, that we're the party that's concerned about the next generation and not them bearing the brunt of the mistakes that we made because the, the, the whole concept of sustainable development, if we're going to develop young people in this party, if we're going to develop young people in this nation, it begins with us making sure we meet the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. We can't make decisions today that's going to impede my children and your grandchildren and your grandchildren. The decisions we make today as a party have to be viable enough for our children to not be not just to be inspired, but for them to have the integrity and the compassion that it's going to take to take this party and put it back in the right direction. So I am optimistic about 14 because I think what 14 offers us is an opportunity to put a senator uh, in Washington that can represent this state and do some really good things. And even though Michelle Nunn has not uh, announced, I'm, I stand shoulder to shoulder with Wendy and saying that it's time for a woman in this state to take office. Amen? <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's going to be very important when we're talking about the, the opportunities in this state, really, you know, when we think of being successful, it's really just when opportunity and preparation cross. That's really all it is. The opportunity is there, and Michelle Nunn and so many other people in this party, they have shown that they can be successful outside of politics. And, and when you combine those things together, what it does is it, it makes a, living play, a level playing field, and it gives us an opportunity to rebuild and reestablish and restructure. I appreciate what the representative said earlier when he talked about, uh, Representative Sharper, Sharper, when he talked about, about youth. He said um, specifically preparing youth for leadership. A part of us preparing youth for leadership is leading by example. We've got to get back out and make sure our young people are registered. When, uh, when I, I, the last time I was in Brooks County, I was with Reverend Joseph Lowry, and we had an extensive conversation about just going and, and, and registering kids at clubs. I mean, we, we started these conversations. We can't just go to college campuses. We've got to go to where our young people are. We've got to start going on the energy questions of public service commission meetings. I know it's a long way, but the decisions that are being made for our energy policy in this state for renewable energy are being made, and they're compromising our integrity. 
and it's happening every day. I, I, I've seen John on more than one occasion uh, at the Public Service Commission, so he can attest. There are things going on at the state level and at the Public Service Commission that have, have no interest at all of people like you and me that are in this room. And in order for that to change, we've got to stop electing people that we're not going to hold accountable. Let me just go ahead and put it out there. We elect someone similar to what happened in 2010 when, when we put a bunch of people in office and they decided to go in another direction. Well, guess what? Good luck with that, but we're going we're gonna to do everything in our power now to replace them and to put the right people in office. And that's, that's really what it's going to take. And in me saying that being in Atlanta, I want you all to know that my family and I, we're, we're willing to travel down here whenever we need to be here. That's what it's going to take. When I need you all, I, I would hope that you would think about making that three and a half hour ride that we made. <laughs> Why? Because that's what it's going to take. And I, I thank God for my wife because she put up with me rehearsing this speech for about two out of the three and a half hours uh, <laughs> on the way up here. But that's really what it's going to take. It takes a commitment. That's something that my generation has not really grasped. I, I, I've met two or three married couples in this room. Uh, one was married 25 years right here. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there you go. 25 years. I mean, that's great. I, I met another couple married 53 years. My generation didn't have an Edmund Pettus Bridge. We didn't have a civil rights movement. Our civil rights movement was Hurricane Katrina. We, we, did, we did not experience enough to be rooted in the cause and to stand in the fight because we didn't have to experience so. But you all in this generation, I mean in this room right now, can inspire us if we don't forget to share the stories that are going to take this group to where we need to be. This, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington, and I think what's going on with the Voters' Rights Act right now is an atrocity. It's a smack in the face to the work that not just people like John Lewis and Dr. Martin Luther King did, but for the people that are in this room that we'll never read about, for the people in this room that we'll never know the steps you took to march, we'll never know the opportunities that you missed, we'll never know what happened because your name isn't in a textbook or on some documentary. But you're responsible to share those stories, and I'm responsible to take the stories you share with me and share them with my children, and we're responsible to make sure that the message that we have for this state and for this nation doesn't get watered down. So I'm gonna close with this. There are four areas that I want us to be able to focus on when it comes, and I wish I had more time, but I'm gonna stay around. I'd love to shake each and every one of you's hand, but I wanna make sure I'm respectful of the time and the evening that we have. When, we're, when we talk about the vocal question, the first thing that I want you all to do is become more informed and aware of what's going on at the Public Service Commission. If we don't take this state in the right direction from an energy and environmental standpoint, there's a quote that says, we do not inherit the planet from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. That's what we're doing. If we don't take care of the environment today, we don't take care of this beautiful red clay that we have, if we don't take care of the trees and the long leaf pines, and all the things that we've grown, the agricultural side of this state, then we're going to do a disservice to the generations that come after us that will never know that part of our history. So I want us to get more educated about the Public Service Commission. You have a great person right here in John. I'm sure many of you that are here today know about the PSC and about some of the things that go on, but utilities are an area that we have to make more of a focus on because if Georgia doesn't start making the right trends towards solar, and wind and natural gas. If we don't start changing some of the things we're doing, we're going to put ourselves 30 years in the wrong direction. So that's the first thing we need to do. Number two, get involved, get on the phone, knock on doors, get back to working as hard as you can to make sure that your neighbor, your friend, and even your enemy, the, the, the gentleman that sponsored the bill to block Georgia Power from adding cost overruns because basically what's going on for you all really quickly, the federal government has given loan guarantees that realistically are not guarantees to, to, to Georgia Power, but what Georgia Power has done is they've created a way to put the tax or the burden of paying the access to access and what they're spending on the rate payer. So there's something called the construction work in progress that, that was established by Georgia Power when the same thing happened in New Hampshire, the New Hampshire uh, Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional. Ratepayers should not have to bear the burdens of someone going a billion dollars over budget in any case. If I default on my loan, I lose my house. If they default on their loan, they make a profit. And there's something wrong with that picture. 
So we've got to first and foremost focus on what's going on at that level. And then number three, I want us to make sure that we're reaching across generational lines. If we don't start to reach out, we can't complain when the rooms aren't full. Use me. I'm young. I got energy. Use me. Use other young people that are at Valdosta State. Grab them. Tell them we have some work for you to do. They're on social media all day. Just let them go on Facebook and Twitter and tweet what you're doing. It doesn't matter. Just whatever it takes, we've got to start giving people something to do or they're going to sit home and complain. Shroom should be full right now. But we've got to give people a reason to come out and support the thing we want to support and to stand up where people are sitting down to be strong and other people are weak. If we don't do those things, then there won't be the hope that we have that in 2014 and 16, we can actually elect people that can, that can lead this state and hopefully continue to have someone in the White House that will allow this nation to go in the right direction and allow the things that we've worked so hard and tirelessly for to continue to go forward. Because if we don't fight for the next generation, who will? And lastly, I want you to make sure you shake everybody's hand in this room. There are, there are, uh, there's, there's five pages of things I wanted to say. But I'm more so here today to let us know that it's not time to relax or to get comfortable with the possibility of a candidate or the possibility of us doing great in 16. I want us to look at it as a fierce urgency of us having to roll our sleeves up and put on our walking shoes and get out there and do the work that no one likes to do. Sometimes it's hard to work out because your body's not used to getting back into the whole concept of moving, walking, and running. But if you want to live long, you've got to take care of your body. And if we want to be viable, effective, efficient, strong, and a, and a prosperous state and an even more prosperous nation, we've got to do what it takes today for us to be successful tomorrow. So I want to thank Gretchen. I want to thank Wendy. I want to thank uh, Representative Sharp and all of you that are even the speakers I haven't heard. I'm really, really optimistic about what we're going to be able to do because I think the right people are in this room. We need to continue to do this all over the state.